Hello, Sabadi. So this video I'm going to be releasing for the next six days. It's a six-part series of my whole trip. It's everything that happened. I documented the whole thing. So just subscribe to see it all. But everybody told me this is a good idea. Or not everybody, but just a lot of people. I was starting to tell people, like, hey, I think I'm going to do this trip. And then people just projected their fears onto me. And I was just in the beginning of the video talking about how it's good to know this advice, but you have to weigh it out and think about it on your own and what you want to do and what you feel is right in your heart to do. Yeah, make educated decisions, smart decisions about, you know, the... the who other people who have who can advise you about the subject but at the end of the day you don't want to have regrets in your heart you just need to do what you feel is best and the smartest thing that you think you can do and i was pretty confident my heart was set on doing this i travel laos alone and yeah so just enjoy it for the video <laughs> i mean just like yeah i'm just gonna stop talking and just play the video but yeah this is just a six part series I like talking about things. I just like to do it. I don't really need to tell people my business. I just feel like it's my personal thing. I've been planning this trip for one month and now the month is here. Today's January 30th. Tomorrow on the 31st I will be leaving at like 6 o'clock in the morning and I'm taking a motorbike trip all the way to Vang Viang which is it's, it's four or five hours away from here but people told me the roads are not so good. But I'm just going to deal with it, you know? Like, why would I be afraid and listen to everyone tell me, ah, it's gonna, you're going to be so tired. How are you going to tell me what I'm going to be? Thank you for your opinion. But that's why I stopped talking to people about so many different things. Because, like, you tell somebody you want to do something. But everybody else I told, oh, you're going to be so tired. Oh, blah. It's just like, damn. Like, you just, like, be literally, I don't know the word. And it's just like you're coming at me and I'm getting, sh I'm shrinking with all these, like, things thrown at me like let me think for myself like yeah you ask for advice on one hand and you need that advice for people who have done the same thing took that same road maybe but at the same time like people's advice and people's opinion like come on now like you have to like it's good to know but at the same time like it was so easy for me to like just get swallowed in all these people's opinions and advice and I thought like with, I sat with myself for a while, like, what do I want to do, actually? Because, like, I, now I'm, like, my brain is just like this. Like, it's good. Like, yeah, it's good advice. Like, people give you good advice. But some people just, like, what is your advice for, you know? Yeah, I don't I didn't feel like hearing all these different opinions and stuff. Um, it's not that bad, like many people have done it, you know, but I mean, I know the roads are different, the police could corrupt me and like, say, pull over and give me money, um, they could try to do something with my passport or something, but it's okay, like I'm thinking of all the worst things that can happen, but at the same time, like what if nothing happened? Yeah, there's some risk, there's risk with everything in life. So now I'm just about to take some pictures. Mountains at night for a pancake. 
I was going to stop at sunset, but I was like, no, just keep going. You'll be there shortly, but shortly turned into two hours. I didn't plan to ride that long in the mountains at dark, but I was determined to get my pancake at the night market. And I stopped in Vang Viang, slept for the night, and then I woke up the next morning and drove the rest of my trip to my final destination, which was Vientiane in Laos, the capital city of Laos. Hi guys wow you know I made it it's like 4 or 5 4 30 in the afternoon and I made it I motorbiked for two days straight look how dusty look how dusty I am like literally I look almost like look at my legs they're super dusty look I just wanted to come here to film this video before I finish my trip I'm here I made it I made it like an hour ago, but I went and go. I went and got a smoothie. It's mango and pineapple. No, it's beetroot and mango. Mm. The whole time I was driving, I got so much sugar cane juice, and I even saved the cups to show you guys how addicted I am. Not addicted, but yeah, I love sugar cane juice so much, and yeah, I just kept buying them along the road. But actually at one point my cup dropped and I drove all the way back and got it because I'm like, I'm not gonna be a litterer. I'm not a litter person. Like pick up your trash, people, don't litter. So I just stored them all in my motorbike. I wanna take this helmet off so bad. I'm like melting. I've been in these clothes for like two days. I'm so dirty. Look at my hands, they're so filthy, whatever. At one point my ass started hurting and then my whole face was covered in dust. My eyelashes were covered in dust. I was like, this is no joke. Like, I'm at my favorite place here. I can't wait to sleep good. But I just stayed in like this off-road hostel. Why did you drive two hours through the mountains? And I was like, for a pancake. The sun was going down and I was like, no, I'm gonna keep going because the night market, I should arrive the way I planned. I should have arrived in the city right right at the time the night market opens. And I haven't been to that city, Vang Biang, since February last year. When I went there, the best thing ever, I even have a video on my channel. I was like, I kept eating those pancakes. I was so addicted to those pancakes. They were so yummy. And so like, I was driving the whole time and I was like, I have to make it before the night market. I have to make it before the night market. Cause already it was getting like eight o'clock and my map kept saying like, oh, you're gonna be there later. You're gonna be there later. I was like, no, if I can be there at nine, I know that they're not gonna do it anymore. They're probably gonna be closing up. But I ended up getting there like around eight o'clock and I just kept going through the mountains. Like if it wasn't for the pancakes, if I didn't care about the pancakes, I would have stopped at sunset right when it got dark. Like right when I couldn't see the road anymore because my headlights are out and I can't see anything but I would like they're, bar they're like barely working I think I need to get a change but I was thinking like I only have an hour to ride or 40 minutes to ride at nighttime so I was like it's not gonna be that bad I might as well just do it I was like do I want to stop here now 
and just check into a hostel, just check into any like little off road guest house I can find because like I'm not trying to be riding through the mountains at nighttime, can't see anything. So I was like, that's when I kind of got a little bit scared, but then I was like, no, I'm just gonna keep going. I only have like 40 more minutes, but that 40 minutes turned into two hours. I didn't even know it was gonna be two hours, but it was like two hours, but I finally made it. And once I made it, I almost cried. I was so proud of myself. I just wanted to say uh, I made it and this truck is about to blow so much dust. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so dusty already, whatever. Oh, look at my bike, my ass hurts so bad. Tomorrow I'm gonna go get a massage. Oh my god, look at all this dust and sand. Do you see it? Oh, you just like went right in my face, whatever. Oh, I'm so hot, I'm so sweaty. I just wanna put on some shorts and a tank top. I'm gonna go say hi to my friend, surprise her. I'm gonna cry when I see her, I'm gonna be so happy. And then I'm gonna come back out to the night market and eat some food, my favorite food. Cause when you come to Vintian, Vintian is the place to eat, so. Yeah, that's that. Um, look at me, I look like, oh, I just wanna take my hair down. I just wanna take this helmet off. It's like, I just brought this helmet because, like, I don't wanna get stopped by the police. And yeah, so. Oh, also when I was riding, I was scared because I was like, if something happens and I have to pull over on the side of the road, nobody's gonna see me because I'm black. Like, I blend in with the nighttime. I mean, literally, there's no street lights. This is Laos, there's no street lights. There's no, like, road line, yellow line, road signs, proper signs, two miles to the next Starbucks. Like, no, it's just mountains, so. <sighs> I made it though, I made it. And can you tell how excited I am? I haven't even stopped talking, I'm so excited. <sighs> but I'm like so dull, I love motorcycles, I do, but I just wanna park this baby. I just wanna sleep, I'm tired. Oh, I saved this for you guys. I wanted to eat it all, but I was like, let me show my little followers. Do I have any followers out there who actually watches my videos? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still posting, although I get like no views, but here I am if you want to subscribe. I saved this for you because I was like, anybody out there maybe would be interested. But now it looks all ugly because like it's all oily and dirty now. Not dirty, but I saved it. I was like, I'm going to show the camera when I get to my destination. I wanted to tell you guys that this is my favorite snack. It's so good. Someone is calling me right now. I think it's my husband in Africa. Hello? Hello? Yeah, who's this? Oh, hello. Hi. How's Kenya? I'm good, I'm good. Hey, can I call you back in like five minutes? Bye. He called me from a different number, so I was like, who's this? I love the Kenyan accents. They're like, he's like, are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me right now? I love Kenyan accent. Kenyan accent, like Kenya, I really love Kenyan accents. Greek accents, Italian accents. So nice. Anyway, so, <clears throat> what was I saying? Oh, I was gonna show you guys this. It's my favorite snack. It's riverweed capian, and I got it for 5,000. And like, if you order it from a restaurant, it'll be like 25,000, but one of my favorite cafe, it'll, one of my favorite cafes, they give it to you as like a little appetizer for free. I love this thing. It's so good. Can you see? It's called Capian or Riverweed. Or I, I said this in my last video, but uh, it's like a little snack. And it usually is like in a big package and it's rolled. But I found them fried already. And it was only 5,000 kip, which is like less than a dollar. It's like 60 cent maybe. Mmm. So good, I love it. Was that like a good show? I saved this just to show you, but then I'm like, wait, what if I flashed it really quickly? I should do like some cinematic B-roll of my capian, whatever it's called. I mean, I ate all the good pieces by now. I should just have ate it. See what I do for you? I love my little subscribers. I should have been ate it, but I like saved it, and then I'm like making sure I do a nice little, okay, do you see this? It's just like seaweed, basically. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, it's just like seaweed and has like tomatoes on it and garlic, but like this one just looks plain because like all the good pieces have like tomato and stuff. Anyway, <laughs> it's so good. Mm, it. Okay, it's salty like popcorn and crispy. Mm. Okay, bye. But yeah, I made it and I'm super happy that I made it and it just goes to show like follow your heart and do what you desire in life and 
People would tell me like, oh, don't do it. It's so stupid. Like, don't do it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like when I told them that I was going to do it. So I eventually stopped telling people that I'm going to do it. And I just did it, you know? Like I said, it's good to take advice. But you have to do it like with yourself or else you're forever going to regret it. Like I'm here and now. Why not make the best of what I, the opportunities that I have and what I want to do? I'm grateful that I can travel to different towns right now. We don't have quarantine. And I love riding motorcycles and like... I think I would have probably been trying to come back to Lao if I ever leave Lao just to take this ride again because I'm like, oh, I should have done it. So why not just do it now, you know? So I'm super happy that I followed my gut and I made it so safe. I had no fear in my heart besides at first, like the first 10 minutes of 20, 30 minutes of riding through, an hour of riding through the dark. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. But then after like an hour of riding through the dark, I'm like, okay, I got this. Like what can go wrong? I'll figure it out, I'll handle it, I'll just stay calm no matter what. My bike made it, I made it, nothing happened. So I just feel so fulfilled and I just feel so proud of myself that I did it. It was just really amazing, riding through the mountains all, all by myself. I'm so grateful that everything, like a lot of stuff could have went wrong, but everything went fine, my bike is fine, I'm happy. Oh, and I also want to say that I didn't really record anything because I'm not that good at multitasking. I just wanted to focus on getting familiar with the roads and focus on my journey rather than try to, like, stop record. Because I'm not going to just, like, put my camera like this, you know. Like, I'm actually going to try and get some decent shots. So, it would take me a little second to try to make a nice video while I'm doing this. So, maybe on the way back, I think I would try to get some footage or a B-roll or something of me. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'll try to record something. But literally, I didn't even take out my camera. It just... I just sat in here, so that's why I didn't do too much recording. But on the way back, I think maybe I'll make a video. This is from January. This is way before lockdown. And thank you for watching. And um, yeah, it's a six part series. So I feel like you should just watch all six because it could, I don't know, it's just, it kind of tells a story. Hopefully, it translates to a story that. <laughs> okay, bye. This was one of my greatest memories in Laos. This is one of the most fulfilling things that I've ever done. I'm at this cafe right now and it's so cute. They have coffee beans from Pak Song, which is the coffee district where all the coffee is grown. And it's so cute. I'm gonna take some pictures here. I got this new outfit, these shoes, and this little dress. I'll show you in a second. It's so cute in here. Look at it. I'm gonna order a coffee. 